testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing. Oh, instant karma. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Hold on. I got to stick this up there. All right. Before we commence with testimony, Ms. Gibb, please make sure to oh my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. answer Thank you. all of the questions verbally so we make a good record. Try to avoid talking at the same time as any attorney questioning you. And I am going to inquire now that you're under oath. Have you reviewed or watched any of this trial since it started on the court's live stream? Have you talked to anyone else about testimony they gave in this trial so far? All right, with that in mind, then, Ms. Blake, if you'd like to inquire on direct, you may. Thank you. Would you please state your name and spell it for the record? Melanie Gibb, M-E-L-A-N-I-E-G-I-B-B. -B. Ms. Gibb, do you know an individual named Chad Daybell? I do. Do you recall approximately when you met him? I believe it was the summer of 2017. Do you recall where you met him? Um, I met him at a, um, a get together that was um, like a, a camping environment. Did you talk to him at that event? I did. Did you stay in close contact with him after that? No. Do you recall meeting an individual named Lori Vallow? Yes. How did you meet her? I met her um, in a church building where I was given a class and she was in the audience. Do you recall approximately when that would have been? Uh, I believe October 2018. And do you recall when you met her who approached whom? She approached me. When you first met her, did you end up striking up a friendship? Yes. And did you stay in pretty consistent contact with her, at least initially after meeting her? Yes. Do you recall going to an event uh, with Miss Vallow towards the end of October of 2018? Yes. Do you recall when that was? It was in October. Um, I, I would say about a few weeks after I met Lori. And yes, we went to St. George, Utah. Do you recall why you went to St. George, Utah? Uh, we went for a, um, a conference. Did anyone else travel with you and Lori to that conference? Yes. And do you recall who? Um, I can't remember their their names. I think there was six of us, five or six of us. Did you all travel together in the same vehicle? Yes. When you got there to the conference, do you recall if Mr. Daybell was there? Yes. What was he doing there, if you know? He was um, selling his books and giving a, a talk. Did you approach him at any point? Um, yeah, we talked. Were you present when, or let me back up. Did you observe Mr. Daybell and Ms. Vallow together? Uh, yes. Do you know if that was the first time they had met? Yes, it was. Were you part of introducing them? I was, um, we walked into the building together and I can't remember if I introduced her or if she introduced herself. I can't recall. And when you say we walked into the building, is that referring to you and Lori? Me and Lori and, and several other women. And Mr. Daybell or Chad Daybell was already present? Correct. Throughout the conference, did you see Mr. Daybell again? Yes. Did you have an opportunity to observe Lori and Chad together. I did. What observations, if any, did you make? Um, they communicated a lot and they uh, were very interested in communicating about the things that they were learning and talking about, um, seemed to be friendly. And when you say they were communicating a lot, did you see them engaged in conversation together? I did. Did it appear to be deep conversation? Yes. Did they appear to be focused on each other? Yes. Was there anything else about it that caught your attention? Um, they seemed to be attracted to each other. That caught my attention. And at the time that you're there in October, do you know if Lori Vallow was married? Yes, she was. 
Had you ever met her husband at that point? I had. And who was her husband? Charles Fallow. Do you know if Chad Daybell was married at that point? Yes, I do. And he was. And do you know who his wife was? Tammy Daybell. Had you ever met Tammy? No. After that conference, did you travel back to Arizona with Lori? I did. Do you recall sometime after the conference talking to her about what she and Chad discussed? Yes. What were some of the things she shared with you? Um, he shared with her, according to what she shared with me, that... Your Honor, if I may respond. Grounds to the objection. Ms. Blake, you may respond. Your Honor, it's a statement of a party opponent as well as a charged co-conspirator. All right. The court does find that's an exception to the hearsay rule that applies here, so the witness can answer the question. Objections overruled. And do you recall the question? Yes. Um, um, she said that they talked about multiple lives, and I believe she talked about, um, you know, how many lives that she had lived on this earth and that she indeed was married to someone named Moroni in a previous life. Those kind of conversations, yeah. And prior to meeting Chad Daybell, did Lori tell you if, did Lori ever talk about multiple probations before that or multiple lives? She did. So she had some interest in that subject matter already? Yes. But when you talked to her about her conversation with Chad at that conference, she told you Chad gave her some additional information? That's right. Did she say anything regarding what Chad had told her about she and Chad? That they had been married in previous probations. Did Lori seem receptive of that information? She did. And we talked about you'd met Charles before, correct? That's right. Had you ever met Lori's children? Yes. And did, specifically, did you ever meet Tylee Ryan? I did. Did you ever meet J.J. Vallow? I did. Do you recall where you met them? In Lori's house. Did you have an opportunity to observe Lori with her children? I did. What observations, if any, did you make about her and Tylee? Um, they had a, um, a difficult relationship. Um, they didn't necessarily um, get along very well. And what about Lori and JJ? Um, I could tell she had a lot of affection for him, um, but he was um, autistic and he seemed to be very busy for her. we talked a little bit about, you met Lori um, in October of 2018, and initially, how often did you two have contact? In the beginning, um, it was almost daily, um, with the exception probably of a day or two a week, and that was probably for maybe about a month or two. Do you recall um, approximately when the contact wasn't as frequent or what was going on at that time? Yes, um, it was after January when she started to move around. She moved multiple times, so I couldn't keep in top contact with her. And that would be January of 2019? Correct. And to be clear, she wasn't moving around uh, to avoid contact with you? Right. But just as she moved around, right. you'd lose track of her? Well, we wouldn't see each other, yeah. Did you still talk to her on the phone? Yes. And after that first conference in October, do you recall the next time that you saw Chad Daybell? Um, the next month, November 2018, he came down for a conference in Arizona. When he came down to Arizona, did his wife come with him? No. And at that conference in October, did you ever see his wife, Tammy, there? No. When he came down, so you talked, he came down to a conference in November in Arizona? That's right. Was Lori present for that conference? Yes. Outside of the conference, did you see him at any other gathering? 
Yes, at her house. And when you say her house, is that Lori? That's right. Was her house in Arizona at the time? Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about the gathering? Um, so the one at her house um, was a, uh, a small group of people met before the conference. And so there was, I don't know, maybe 20 people there. And um, so Lori and um, her friends were there. Did you have an opportunity to observe Lori and Chad together at, at that meeting or the gathering at her house? Yes. What observations did you make? Um, they they talked often with each other. Um, they seemed to be very interested in each other. Did Lori at any time tell you anything about she and Chad on when he was down there in Arizona? Yes, she told me that they had been married before in previous probations. Is that when she first shared that information with you? I believe she shared it with me in St. George. So it's between St. George and um, November, she shared it. Did she talk about going to the temple with Chad? She did. What did she tell you about that? She told me that they were going to um, be sealed, resealed again like they had been in previous uh, lives together. And did she tell you that they, in fact, had gone to the temple? Yes. And that was in November, about a month after meeting each other? That's right. And she told you the purpose of that was so they could be sealed together again. That's right. At that time, was Charles still alive? Yes. And was Tammy still alive? Yes. Was Charles present at the gathering at her house? No. Do you know where he was or did you learn where he was? He was out of town. Had you, do you know what Chad did for a living? He was a sexton and he wrote books. With regard to his books, had you ever read any of his books? Yes. Do you know if Lori had read any of his books? Yes. Did she seem interested in his books? Yes. When Chad was there in November, do you know where he stayed? He stayed at Lori's house. And Charles was not there? Correct. Did anyone else stay at her house, if you know? Yes, there were multiple people there. Were there any other men there? Mm, I, I don't know if her brother was there, but nobody else that I know of. And when you say her brother, do you know which brother you're referring to? Alex. Did you ever meet any of Lori's other brothers or her other brother? I don't think so. Did Lori ever talk to you about her conversations with Chad? Yes. Do you know, did Lori ever share with you if she turned to Chad for advice? She did. At, and we talked a little bit about the multiple lives or multiple probations already, correct? Yes. At some point, did Chad or Lori share more information about that with you? Yes. And which one of them? Um, they both did. Do you know which one of them seemed to have the most understanding regarding multiple probations? Yes, Lori would often call Chad and Chad would give her the information and then she would come back and share it with me and her other friends. And when she would share the information, would she tell you she got that from Chad? Yeah. At some point, did Chad or Lori talk to you about the concept of light and dark? Yes. Do you recall who talked to you about that? Lori shared it with me. Did she tell you where she got that information from? She got it from Chad. 
What did she share with you about the concept of light and dark? So if someone was light, they had made contracts with Jesus Christ before they came here. And if they were dark, they had made contracts and promises with Satan. And it was a different scale level of how dark, dark or light they were. So it was a decision before they came here to earth. Yes. Contract. Initially, yes. And then with regard to the multiple probations, as you learned more about that, what what did Lori share with you regarding multiple probations? Um, that people lived multiple times. Um, and then she would find out, you know, she would try to find out like when that was. And was there some kind of a rating system or a system to easily identify if someone was light or dark or what level they were? Um, she would ask him and he would somehow find out and he would find out, you know, how many times they've been on this planet or any other planets, I guess. And he would just find that out by asking questions the way he did. And then she would share it with us. And when, and the he you're referring to, is that Chad? Yes. At some point, um, were people designated with a number and then either an L or a D? Correct. Where would those designations originate? From Chad. And if someone was uh, designated a D, did that stand for dark? Correct. And the L was for light? Correct. At some point, did Lori also share with you that she believed she had a mission here on earth. Yes. What did she share with you she believed her mission to be? She felt that it was her mission to gather women to the 144,000 um, and that she would be the leader of it. At some point, she, she thought she was going to lead that. And when we talk about the 144,000, what's that in reference to? Could you explain a little bit? Yes. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a biblical. Um, explanation for a certain group, a certain amount of people that would go out and gather Israel in the last days and have the power and authority to do that. So gathering people in the end times. Correct. Do you know where Lori got the idea or the belief that she was meant to be one of the leaders or help gather? I think she got it from herself. Do you know if she ever talked, did she ever tell you if she talked to Chad about that? She did. What did she tell you in relation to that, if you recall? Well, she would, she would, um, she shared with him what she believed she was, which was the gatherer of that. And then he, um, he agreed that she was. And so he, you know, told her that that's what her mission was. <clears throat> Do you know if Lori was telling other people about light and dark and multiple probations as well? She was. Do you know some of the other individuals she shared that with? Yes. Um, Sulema, Serena, N Nicole, and Christina, and Melanie, and just maybe a few other people that are not as significant. Did she also share these ideas with Alex? Yes. Do you know if Chad ever shared these ideas with any of those individuals? If I may respond. Okay. And I'll note on the record, it didn't pick up on the microphone. It's an objection based on uh, lack of foundation. Ms. Blake, response. Your Honor, I specifically ask if she knows. I'm asking her personal knowledge. All right. Well, she can answer the question if she knows, but not necessarily go into what she knows, because I do think there's no foundation at this point for what. Do you know if Chad ever shared those teachings or beliefs with any of those individuals? Yes. And did he? Yes. Were you present? Yes. And again, when Lori would tell you these things, she would explain she received the information from Chad. Yes.
And we talked about that gathering in November at Lori's house. Were some of these things talked about then? Yes. Was Chad present? Yes. Was Lori present? Yes. Were they both talking about these ideas? Yes. Had you heard of these concepts before? Yes. Had you heard of them in the way that Chad was teaching them? No. At the time, were you open to learning more about these things? Yes. Did Lori or Chad ever talk to you about if a person could switch from being light to dark or vice versa? Yes. What did they tell you regarding that? That they might be light, for example, and then some maybe evil entity could enter them and then they would become dark. So a light person could become dark. That's right. When they, and I, I say they, do you recall if it was Lori or Chad that would tell you these things? She would tell me. And would she tell you where she received the information? Yes. She, and, always she went to Chad with it. Thank you. Do you recall when Lori first started talking to you about people being becoming dark? I would say sometime between January and February of 2019. Do you recall the first person she talked to you about becoming dark? This the first specific person. Yes, it was Char it was Charles Fallow. Did she tell you where she received that information? Yes, she received it from Chad. At some point, did she talk to you more about what it meant if the evil spirit came in, like where the actual person went? So when a dark spirit would take over, the, the original spirit of the person would go into the spirit world. And that's what she originally told you. That's right. And did she tell you she received that information from Chad? Yes. So was your understanding the body of that person was still alive? Correct. It just had a different dark spirit in it now. Correct. What did Lori originally talk to you about? Was there a way to do something to help that person? Um, she would try to um, do like um, a casting out of an evil spirit um, and, and try to convince the spirit to the, the evil spirit to leave. Do you know where she got the concept of casting from? I believe she got it from energy work. At some point, did you learn if Charles had been designated a different name? Yes. What was that name? Ned Snyder. Do you know where that name came from? Uh, Chad told that to Lori. At some point, had Lori talked to you about her having a dream regarding Charles? Yes. What had she told you? She said that when it was after Christmas and he was out of town, I believe he went to Texas and he took uh, JJ and she had a dream during that time that they were not going to come back, that they were going to get in a car accident. And that's what she saw. And that they would be Charles and JJ? Correct. Did she believe Charles was going to be killed in that accident? She did. Was Charles killed in a car accident? No. Was it sometime after that that he was labeled dark? Yes. Judge, how about some foundation? Your Honor, it's a question to her personal knowledge. I guess I can rephrase. Go ahead, Ms. Blake. Thank you. At some point, did you learn or did Lori tell you if he was labeled dark? once he did not pass away in that accident. Yes. And again, Judge, if I could have some time, date, place. You'd like to lay additional foundation, you mean, Ms. Blake? Do you recall approximately when Lori told you or when you learned Charles was not killed in an accident? January 2019. And do you recall approximately, I think you've already said, but do you recall approximately when you were told Charles was dark? 
It was some, it was, I would say weeks after that. And that designation came from Chad. Correct. And then we started talking a little bit about the idea of casting. Right. Did you ever participate in any castings? I did. Can you tell me a little bit about what would happen at the casting? Um, so Lori and a few of her friends would stand in a circle and then um, feel like they had the power and authority to cast out the evil spirit by trying to use words, I guess, like an energy work to be able to convince them to leave and hoping that the evil spirit would leave. So would some of the individuals say a prayer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Would some of the individuals um, talk about sending spiritual weapons or something of that nature? Yes. Was the person that the casting was being done on physically present? No. Was anyone physically touching, doing anything to, in this case, Charles? No. Do you recall, did you participate in the castings for Charles? Yes. At any point, did Lori tell you whether or not the casting was successful? Um, yes. And what did she share with you? She would say that that Ned had left, and then <clears throat> shortly after, she would say somebody else got in, another entity. Do you know who told her that information or where she got it from? Yes, she got it from Chad. And did she tell you that? Yes. At some point, did you learn what would happen to the body if the casting was actually successful? Um, she would say that that the body would was supposed to die if they if it would if the evil spirit left. So in Charles' case, Ned's out and a new spirit's in. Correct. Do you know if there were additional castings? Yes. In relation to Charles, I should say. Yes. Did you participate in, in in any additional castings? Yes. Do you know if at any point the next entity or spirit was cast out of Charles, according to Lori? Yes. And was it? According to her, it was. And did she tell you where she received that information? From Chad. And then what happened in relation to Charles when that next entity was removed according to Lori. Nothing happened to Charles. Did a new entity come in? According to her. And did she tell you where she learned that from? Yes, uh, Chad. And was Chad ever present for any of the castings? Uh, yes. Were there castings done on other individuals besides Charles that you know of? Yes. And who were some of those individuals? Um, Brandon Boudreaux was one that I know of. And did you participate in a casting on Brandon Boudreaux? I don't know if I said anything. I was just was there when they did it. Do you know if Chad was present at that one? Yes, he was. And who was Brandon Boudreaux? He was Lori's niece's which her name is Melanie's husband. Had you met Brandon? Yes. At any point, did you learn if Brandon had been designated as dark? Yes. And had he? According to her. Did she tell you where she received that information? Yes, from Chad. Do you know if any castings were ever done on Tammy Daybell? Yes. Were you present for them that you recall? I don't recall. Do you know if castings were done on Tylee or JJ? Uh, not that I know of. You were not involved in any if they were? I don't recall any of that. And the castings in relation to Charles, do you recall approximately what period of time those were occurring? So sometime between... January and February 2019, up until um, I, I don't know, um, probably before he died. And was your understanding that if the casting was successful, 
the body would naturally expire. Yes. Were you ever told that there would be violence done to the body? Never. Were there other individuals that were involved in the castings besides you? Yes. Did some of them seem to have more involvement? Yes. And do you recall who seemed to be more involved in the castings? Um, uh, Lori and Sulema seem to know the most about it. And the casting that we talked about, Chad being present for, do you recall where that would have occurred? Yes. Where was that? That was in uh, Arizona. Are you aware when Charles Vallow was killed? Yes. Do you recall approximately when that was? July 11th. 2019. So this would have been subsequent to the castings taking place? Yes, right. You know, shortly after. At some point, did you start to believe or believe that Charles may be possessed? To some level, yes. And how many times had you met Charles? Just a handful of times. Would you say you knew him very well? No, I didn't know him very well. Is it fair to say most of the information you had about Charles came from Lori? Yes. Do you recall sometime in July staying at Lori's residence? I do. And do you recall her asking you to leave at some point? Yes. Why did she tell you you needed to leave? So I woke up early in the morning and she told me I needed to leave because Charles was going to be coming down. He's driving in from Texas and that he was going to kill her. Did she tell you anything that she was going to do, any precautionary steps she was going to take? I believe she said uh, that Alex was going to be there to help protect her. Did you have an opportunity to observe Alex and Lori together? Yes. How would you describe their relationship or your observations? Close, a uh, close brother and sister relationship. Anything about it seems strange to you? No, it seemed normal to me. Just close? Yeah, really close. And you talked about her saying Alex was going to come to protect her. At any point, did you learn if someone had designated Alex as Lori's protector? Yes. What did you learn about that? So as um, Chad would share with Lori that um, his mission in life, according to what he learned, was to protect Lori. That was why he came here. So Chad had designated Alex as Lori's protector. That's right. And Lori was going to have Alex stay to protect her from Charles. I believe so. Did you ever hear Charles threaten her? No. Were you present when Charles was killed? No. At some point later, did you talk to Lori about that? Yes. What did she share with you about the killing of Charles? Um, she told me that um, he came in from Texas and that they were arguing and she said he put his cell phone in the car and she grabbed it, ran in the house. Um, he was really upset with her. They were standing around the kitchen. He was threatening her. Um, Tylee had a bat and she was trying to protect her mom or herself, I'm not sure. And then um, her, let's see. Then um, Charles and Alex got in a physical fight, and then Alex went to the bedroom to get his gun to defend himself. And was it your understanding, or were you told that Alex then shot and killed Charles? That's what they told. Um, that's what she told me. And did you also talk to Alex about what had happened? Yes, 
And do you recall what he shared with you? I believe he shared the same story. I don't remember all the detail to it, but it was the same story. Do you recall how close in time it was after Charles' death that you talked to Lori and or Alex? It, it felt like about four days afterwards. When you talked to Lori and Alex, were they together? Well, at first I talked to her on the telephone, so I don't know if he was there or not. And then later when you talked to Alex, was Lori present? I don't know if the, it was the first time I saw her or not. It could have been. I could have been the next time. I'm not really sure. But at some point around four days later, you talked to both Lori and Alex. Well, for sure her, but I can't remember when I talked to him. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. clarifying that. Yeah. When you talked to Lori, it's just four days later. Any sign of sadness? No. Any sign of grief? No. How did she seem? Happy. When you talked to Alex, any sign of remorse? Um, a little, little um, thoughtful, a um, little unsure of himself. At some point after Charles is shot and killed, did you see Chad Daybell again? Yes. Do you recall approximately how long after? So it must have been a couple of weeks after Charles's death. He was in uh, Arizona at Lori's house. So just a couple weeks after Charles' death, Chad Daybell's down in that house. Correct. Do you know at that time if Tammy Daybell was still alive? She was. Do you know where Chad stayed when he was back down in Arizona? I believe it was uh, Lori's house. Did you have an opportunity to observe he and Lori together? Yes. What observations did you make? Um, they seemed super excited to be together. They were standing, talking to several of us at the kitchen table, and they're standing side by side and you know, excited to share, you know, their, their future plans together. Any sign of grief from Chad? No. And you talked about they were excited to share their future plans together. Yeah. So Chad and Lori were planning a future together? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Tammy was still alive? Yes. And Judge, I'm just looking at the time here. It's almost 10. I don't know if the court wants to take a break at this point. Uh, I was or thinking any time between now and 10, 15 or whenever you feel like is a logical break point is fine. I think this may be a logical break point. Okay, let's go ahead and take our mid-morning recess then. And uh, it's right about 10. So we will resume right back about 1030 with further testimony. All rise, please.